my mind is really starting to fire faster now, probably faster than it has in the last 22 months, which is very interesting because it's a normal feeling for me, except for the last 22 months. <laughs> so kind of, kind of weird, but kind of exciting. So I find myself processing information more quickly again, which is very nice, and it means I can take in a lot of stuff. And I'm reviewing some stuff that I know, uh, that I've known quite a bit, al along with adding new material. I'm reading or listening to the book Behave by Robert Sapolsky, which is amazing about the human brain. It's, it's extraordinary, Robert Sapolsky is, anyways. But things like The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus, which really is primarily about whether you should kill yourself or not from an absurdist perspective, which is what Camus founded, and he's kind of insane. And then there's this, which is extraordinary. This tiny little book, uh, published in 1725 by Benjamin Franklin, is 16 pages long. A dissertation on liberty and necessity, pain and pleasure is extraordinary super interesting benjamin franklin tried to collect them all and then destroy them all so they wouldn't actually be public anymore but he couldn't uh of course i'm reading replay always reading replay the greatest novel ever written studies on hysteria i'm going back over with freud's early work and freud was nah, not that useful uh very famous which was his goal joseph brewer that guy Smart guy, super interesting, much better at psychology than Freud. And then Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. This thing is extraordinary. Possibly the greatest self help book of all time. It's not very big, it's really old and super interesting. And a bunch of other stuff. But I'm writing philosophy essays, which I'm publishing on my site, which was supposed to be mostly about fiction. But whatever. I mean, it's still writing. <laughs> so there's going to be four essays, which will be interesting. I'm going to try to do each essay in one post. I made one post about all four essays. Then I'm going to try to do just four more posts for the four essays, which they're 2,500-word essays, so they're not going to be small. And it's really heavy, deep writing. The first one is about the most important question in philosophy, which is what a lot of this book is about, the myth of Sisyphus, which Camus proposes that the most important question is essentially he doesn't actually phrase it as a question he puts the question into a statement uh, so it's kind of weird but basically is life worth living and then i'm proposing a different question and i'm going to throw a ton of stuff in there and i've with my more recent experiences i guess and realizations i have some really simple models of psychology combining perceptual control theory essentially with some of this classic repression type stuff which Robert Sapolsky describes how the processes actually work in a simplified version this version is super simplified like the original versions it's like simplified like they originally did uh, you know a long time ago a hundred years or more ago but extremely useful the best psychological models that I've come up with the best ones I've come across as far as simple models go, combining perceptual control theory with these other repressive models, super interesting and I think very applicable, very actually useful. So that's interesting. And my energy seems to be coming back somewhat, uh, to a large extent actually, but now I have a lot to rebuild and I probably have a lot of overall organ damage, I believe, which still probably accumulate, but at a much lower rate and to a large extent I'm rebuilding. I put up a vertical pole out in the backyard so that I can start training the human flag sticking off a, a pole sideways which I used to be able to just grab onto and stick off sideways because I believe that helped my spine a lot and when I was doing it I didn't realize that that was helping my spine so much I didn't even know there was anything wrong with my spine I just felt really good at the time failed to associate it failed to connect the cause and effect so I have never been so weak that I couldn't even do the beginner steps of it where you like wrap your arm around it in a weird way and put your elbow into your side and lift off couldn't even do that uh, a week ago I've been training it since then I can lift off a little bit for like a second probably not two seconds, maybe a second and a half <laughs> off the ground. So starting at a very, very low uh, spot. But I've been able to do the, the stretch of the cat or skin the cat, skin the cat where you pull your feet up, you grab onto rings, you pull your feet up over and through so your arms are kind of 
twisted behind you kind of your feet touch the ground and i haven't been able to pull that back over but i've been able to let go there and it's been a long time many months since i've been able to do that so my strength is increasing my energy is increasing my mental clarity has increased a ton my neck and spine have been doing weird movements weird snapping weird cracking a lot uh, so a lot of movement there which is very interesting and i'm not not sure exactly which way to take everything i think at some point i scheduled a meeting with a surgeon in november but i don't have it written down which is very odd i should have written in my calendar which is what i normally do i don't think i was feeling very good at the time that i scheduled it and i don't think i had a ton of mental clarity at the time so that's kind of ironic but if i can figure out when and who that appointment is with uh, i still want to pursue that a, a little bit i think but what i'm doing is working and it seems to be working pretty well i've taken on another toastmasters group i didn't exactly intend to in montague i said it would help out with a little bit come sometimes and now i'm the vice president of education and s setting up their system because they're a new club so i kind of just you know felt felt the water with my toe a little bit and now i'm out there like swimming uh so a little accidentally but i think i might be able to take it on now so we'll we'll see how that goes and then the most interesting thing i'm doing well i'm doing several interesting things but one of the most interesting things i'm doing is i've decided to really delve into this book which i consider the greatest novel ever written and learn this the style if not the structure the structure uh, i'll kind of take on separately uh, but I'm reading through other sections anyways but go through it literally paragraph by paragraph and mimic it imitate it almost parody it uh, but not in a, not in a humorous sense it's not very good at humor anyways and create a story with this same style and the same structure now i've heard of People doing this. Brandon Sanderson talks in one of his classes about some authors he knows, uh, professional authors that are successful, that literally took a work that they liked and copied the entire thing word for word just to get a feel for how it is to write in that style with that grammar with that structure just just to get a feel for it, a little more in depth than just reading it or just listening to it you know writing it speaking it saying it so you're a little more involved and i think to a large extent adapting it to be a slightly different story same same basic story but you're kind of filling it in with other stuff and if you're doing that like i'm doing it i'm taking one of the interactions with people out at the beginning and making it an interaction not with a person and i'm taking out a heart attack and making it a, so I'm taking out the interaction with a person, making an interaction with a newspaper. I'm taking out a heart attack that causes death and having an electrical surge that causes a, an outing. Now, as we move further into the story, it's hard. I'm not even very far ahead. I'm like the fourth paragraph, uh, two articles, two posts in. But it's, it's going to become harder, probably, to adapt those two situations, even though you're kind of copying, but you're not not really copying it's different enough that it's hard to do it's, it's very difficult writing the philosophy of writing is difficult writing too if you're just writing fiction and you're just kind of letting it flow especially a lot of people do that for a first draft it's not bad like words will just come out or from just writing articles even when i wrote articles on weird stuff like selling wooden watches from japan stuff like that the once you do a little bit of research then the words just flow it's it's really easy but trying to stay close to a certain style is whew, difficult uh and slow moving so it's extremely interesting i'm really stretching my capacity which means i'm firing a bunch of neurons that i don't have connected well which means they're getting wrapped in myelin which is developing the skill of firing those neurons so the fact that it's difficult actually indicates that it's perfect for learning the skill and that'll be very interesting i believe it'll be a long road but i think it's going to be very fruitful I, I think it's showing that it's fruitful already just in very small amounts so it's hard to detect but i i believe it's definitely there so i think some exciting stuff happening health wise and of course mentally because 
the mind is the function of the brain. The brain is an organ. <laughs> so if you're not healthy, you're not going to be smart because your brain's not going to fire right. And it, that is definitely the best news. But then that branches out and allows me to do a lot of other things like think clearly and remember things, learn, <laughs> little things like that. And the teaching is still going all right. I haven't been super ambitious in the direction of adjusting that or pursuing making like the video course. And I have some interesting offers. I have a guy that offered to let me work with him and some clients in personal coaching, which I think would be very interesting. I put it on hold. We'll see how long that lasts. But I put a pin in it, tabled it, whichever metaphor you want to use until I thought I had the capacity to do it. Now as my capacity is increasing, I have to be very selective of what I add in because I've had a bunch of opportunities slip through my fingers or crumble through my fingers because I haven't been able to handle them in, in the state, which has been a new experience for me. I've never encountered a, a job that I took on that I couldn't do in the last 22 months I've encountered a bunch of them. So that's been a very weird experience. So I have to selectively, the, the most important thing is to be selective here in adding things in and what I'm taking on. And in the last few days, I've added some stuff in that's been, uh, that's pushed me, uh, that's pushed me quite a bit in my capacity. So I've, I have to watch that, I have to see how it goes. And there's certain things I know to do that I need to do, like the meditation process for having a different experience of pain, which allows me to function at a significantly higher level, probably for a variety of reasons. But if I don't do that, then it, I'll, I can see, it's very slight, but I, I can see that it'll start wearing on me over time because that reverts essentially there's a whole psychology behind it which is super interesting but i'm not going to go into it now so i'm i'm excited i'm excited about these things though and it's it's amazing it's the best feeling in the world having a highly functioning brain uh, a low functioning brain after having a brain that works well is the worst experience i've ever had by far actually you, you would think pain or the death of loved ones would be the worst, but no, losing your mind, I would say, is definitely the worst experience that I can even possibly imagine now. Uh, so I really appreciate having the high-functioning mind. It's great. And I'm only doing two chiropractic adjustments a week. And when I did the meditation retreat, I went for almost two weeks, right about 14 days, I believe, without a chiropractic adjustment. And I did decently well. I, I did all right. Not a lot of impact during that time. So that lends some fruit. I'm going to stay with two days a week, though. That, that's definitely working well. Dropping down to one day a week, I think, might have bad consequences slightly over a long period of time. But I don't want to do that. So I like what I'm like what I'm doing right now. Other my car completely falling apart and not having any money to fix it and all the financial stuff but we'll see how this actually goes but i feel relatively confident in recovering some finances i've never had a ton of money but i've I haven't had financial issues and never been in debt i i feel like with a properly functioning brain I can recover the finances <laughs> without a properly functioning brain. The, the finances are just gone. Uh, so I believe now I can start working on fixing those because I'll be a lot better at problem solving. So we'll see how that comes out. But either way, I'm happier. <laughs>